had a few uh, people, well, uh, one on my YouTube just the other night, and uh, four others asking about how to copyright songs and publish them. Okay, um, I'll, I'll just tell you what I do and what is popular in doing it uh, for most musicians. Most musicians don't know about getting a little publishing name or company started. Um, for me, uh, with a few of the bands I've been with and along with my solo stuff, um, you just kind of come up with a, a name that you want to put on your uh, um, on your music. And if you put out a CD, you can have this publishing thing on there. Um, for me, I just registered my company name, which is Barking Eye Music. It's actually um, part of Barking Eye Productions because I do graphic art design, I do some video creation, but I also do music. So it spiders down into those other ones. But the music side of it is Barking Eye Music. You can register the name. I forget how much it costs. It's been too long now. And that way the name, your name is protected. So like I was with band Wishbone and uh, we created the name Wish Tunes. And when I was with the band called Rain Horses, uh, we had um, murderous butterfly music. So you can be really creative. You know, I think Beatles were Northern songs. I believe that was theirs. And, you know, it's good to get that going. Um, you can register the name down where they register businesses here locally. Now the copyright thing, I got a few things on on paper here just to, to help out. Um, I'm going to be honest. Anybody can rip your song off. Okay, you can put it online. You can be playing it live. They can record it. You don't even know if they're ripping it off until you know it hits you in the face. And it happens to professionals. It happens to us bozo amateurs and you know, it just happens. The Where people get caught is, you have to prove it's your song. It's the proof, okay? Now, even though you might have proof, um, you may be in court with lawyers and spending tons of money to get the rights of that song, you know, um, I shouldn't say it like that. I should say, if someone does steal your song and you end up in court, you can prove it's your song, but it's the money to get to that stage that will eat you alive. Um, because, I mean, if somebody makes it famous on your song, they got millions behind them. And how much are you going to spend to get the rights of that song back? I mean, people will steal a song. It happens every other day. You know? Or they may borrow pieces of that song and use it in theirs, and it's up to you to prove it. And even though you have a copyrighted piece of paper that says, oh, this is my song, blah, 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 um, you still have to have the, the court battle to get it back. It's still going to cost you money. It's, it's a double-edged sword, we'll say. Okay, so this is the basic procedure in Canada um, of how to copyright your music, the simplest way. You can spend bigger bucks, but this is the simpler and most common. And... Uh, it's been done for years. Okay, so I'm just going to read a few things. Get your music. It's songs written, you record it. It doesn't have to be recorded in a recording studio. Okay, it doesn't have to be. But you have to have it, like say if you're writing a love song. The basics, you have to have the, the one instrument, your vocals, for the recording part of it. So we have to hear how the melody goes, hear the lyrics going. You also have to write all your lyrics out and date code those. Always put a date on them. So if today I wrote a love song, uh, I recorded the, my acoustic in front of this camera singing the lyrics. I have a lyric sheet printed with the date code on it. You take that camera recording, you can either put it on a DVD, you can record it onto a CD, you can put it on, I don't have one here, but a memory stick, computer memory stick. Um, if you want, but I prefer DVD and CDs because you can write on the labels. So what you're going to do is write on the label once it's burned. So we're just talking one song. You're going to write the name of the song. You're going to write the date. 
you can write your name if you were the writer or you and your co-writers. You can write all their names on there. You can write your publishing company if it's you know I don't like to get screwed publishing company okay you write that on there so that's all on the label you write the same thing on your lyric sheet okay then basically you take all of that the one, the one song put the CD in a nice case put it in uh, an envelope put the lyric sheet in the envelope and you write your information on it you know your your all your all the guys co-writing put their names on it put in a sealed envelope and you're going to send it registered mail to yourself and what that does it puts a confirmation date on when that was out okay now when you get that envelope back to you do not open it you never open it unless you need it in court when someone rips you off you leave it sealed and I recommend when you send it out label in one corner of it or the back of that envelope write the song title on it because you say if you're like me I write a lot of songs you know I can I mean I got 80 something songs on the go right now with either my solo stuff or my band Flat Stanley which I write a majority of too with my my partner um, you write the name on it because you'll have all these envelopes and you, you'll be clueless to know what's in them and you can't open them because you need them in court so that's what you do you mail it to yourself so you get it back it's registered has a stamp on it okay has it written somewhere on there the title of the song so you don't get lost in what what it is because if you have 20 of these sitting here you're going oh they're all registered me but what's the title okay so you get my drift so <clears throat> excuse me so then what you want to do is what in my case you can get a safety deposit box which is basically what I do and you can store all the songs in a safety deposit box I also recommend that you make two other copies and they don't have to be on the CDs they can be on a memory stick like I say the problem with the memory stick is you can't write on it you can write on the document that's on the memory stick but you don't have a physical when you take it out there it's written it's on the memory stick they have to go searching for it so but for the other two backup copies you want backup copy of your lyrics you want backup copies of the song get used to making at least three backups okay and then you're covered there now so basically that covers the song and because it's registered you know you can take that in case someone rips you off you can go into court and say that's my song here's my proof and you lay it on there and the court will open that they yank it out and there it is there's your proof okay <clears throat> but remember on your lyric sheet you're going to write the date always write the date code full date code um, and um, all, all of that's involved in writing the song. Now, what I, I suggest is to you, there's another step, and, and that is registering with the company SoCan. And what SoCan does, you go just go online SoCan. I think it's SoCan.ca. Um, and what that does is protects your song from being played and you not getting money. Now, if you sell the song or not sell the song, give rights to the song to someone to to do do it live you want to cut of that and what this does it protects you uh, in the sense of you, you get paid for that song being used whether it's played on radio played in a movie you know it's played in that it's supposed to cover being played in a nightclub but I I mean how do they enforce that they don't have the SoCan police going around to police that but um, they, they say that is possible that they are uh, they can do that but you know there's, there used to be a SoCan rep here there's not so anyways you register with SoCan online um, that that company will protect your rights for the song being played but what the cool thing about them is their website has a um, database that you are entitled to when you become a member 
that you can enter your songs, the title, lyrics, the time of the song, the dates, the writers, your publishing company. I don't want to get ripped off, publishing company. Um, and you put it in these already wonderfully laid out forms to register your songs. And what that does gives you an extra backup of when that song was actually written. And I've had that, and I've tried to tell that to so many people. I've been doing it since the early 90s when I was with a band called The Rain Horses, and we did all that, and I did all my solo stuff from back then. Um, and what that does is uh, um, it gives an extra record to go into court with. It says, well, here, I registered with SOCAN at such and such a time, such and such a date, and uh, then you're covered twice. You're covered with the registered mail letter to yourself, but you're also covered with the SOCAN thing. Now, SOCAN, you can join. Um, I'm trying to think now if it's a, there's a fee involved. I think you can join for free, but if you want their monthly magazine or bi-monthly magazine, you pay a fee. But I, I can't remember. But I've been a member since the 90s, so it's a great uh, program to get in. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, I'm trying to look down here to see if I've missed anything. And yeah, well, in, in the SoCan thing, uh, they have information on if you want to go higher up steps for copywriting material. They they can send you all that material once you're a member. But in Canada, I'll be honest. Um, as soon as you put the song up on a on a on a website, like say a music site, it's copyrighted because as soon as it goes up, it's day coded. As simple as that. It's weird as that is, but it is. There isn't a lot lot there. Um, now, for getting your songs online, go to Reverb Nation. It's the best. It's simple. It's free. It's got a great player. So you upload your music. You can upload your lyrics if you want. You can upload video of uh, you playing the song. Uh, the player that plays the music for the public is great, easy, it's very efficient. One of the best players on any music site. It seems to always work properly. Um, so you get your songs out there. What you do is you register the site. You can say there's little data entry areas and you can put <coughs> excuse me, your publishing company that it's you that writes the songs, what instruments you play on it, and it date codes it. And then you can upload as many songs as you want for the public to either play for free, or you can set it up with an account that you can down, uh, people can download and buy the song for, you know, whatever, 50 cents, two bucks, whatever you want, you know. But because you're a struggling artist, uh, you might want to give some bonuses, so here you can have this for free. So, um, Tons and tons of musicians have been on Reverb Nation for years, including myself, and it's fantastic. Where other websites go down and fail, like MySpace and all that, this Reverb Nation is about musicians. And there you will find that you get offers to play at certain festivals. Um, you can have your music showcased. You know, some cost money to do that, but it's, it's just great for musicians. So everybody get on Reverb Nation if you got original material. To, to promote. So that's the scoop. Any questions about uh, the copyright thing, let me know. Uh, I've got sealed packages for music I've written back in, God, 82, 1982, uh, with certain bands and uh, solo stuff. And uh, you just put it in, you know, your uh, safety deposit box, or, you know, you can leave it at home, put it in a, in a safe. You got to remember, though, if if you get a fire and it's in your house, you better have some backup copies just in case. You know, that's why I say make three copies. Otherwise, it's all going bye bye. So I hope that helps. Any questions, let me know via the, the forums or uh, YouTube, and uh, I'll try to help. Okay, bye.